winner, which is exactly what we plan on doing this week. So, Sia, I'm going to let you go first and last. What do I mean hmm. by that? I'll tell you in a second. Sia, you're up first. Very interesting. I got to give a shout out to somebody in the chat. John Norell, who says, I have to pick golfer to determine where I draft in my fantasy football league this oh. year. Who should it be, Sia? Well, here's the thing. John Norell is in my league. He's talking about my <laughs> league. He's never been in this chat before. So I got to say, Johnny, John Daly might be the guy for you. The guy for me, however, is Brooks Kepka at plus 2,000. It's plus 1,800 now, but if you're a Sportsline member, you would have seen my article Monday afternoon, which actually had this number at plus 2,000. I still like it at plus 1,800 because, frankly, Brooks Kepka is a big game killer. Like That narrative is starting to solidify at this point with what we've seen this year. And honestly, if he was on the PGA Tour, at the rate that he's winning when he just splashes on the PGA Tour and, and, and wins something like the PGA Championship, i got to think if he was actually on the PGA Tour, this number would be... 10 to 1, 12 to 1. So I, I really think I'm getting value with Brooks Kepka here. I've already sung the praises of Terrell Hatton. Don't need to do that anymore. At 25 to 1, I like that. Morikawa is really interesting to me because from a ball striking standpoint, he fits the narrative that Steve Scott talked about on, on the front end. And if you look at his putter, which had been problematic, I believe he's gained with the putter in four in a row. So he's super sneaky to me at a pretty long number for Colin Morikawa, 35 to 1. And then finally, Wyndham Clark. I'll just keep betting this guy because he keeps coming through. Uh, 60 to 1 on a guy who has proven, who has a proven track record in terms of winning. I think that's a very fair number. I agree. Like all four of those, have no issues with them. By the way, you mentioned your sports line article. M Squared also has an article up there that Taylor uh, references in the chat. If you are a sports line member, then you know all this. You get everything early. And that's something we're really trying to do is get picks up early so those of you who are members get that benefit, sometimes even the night before. So thank you, C, and thank you, M Squared, for doing that. All right, Steve Scott, I'm coming to you, big boy. And <laughs> It's hard to argue with any of your three. Explain yourself. Yeah, I mean, Ricky Fowler, I mean, come on. He's playing great. He's He's got some awesome momentum, uh, and, and he's got this uh, golf course kind of dialed in. He knows how to play this golf course. This golf course is such a strategic golf course. You have to be really cerebral, and you have to have a good history here, I really feel, if you want to do some good, uh, do some damage this week. At plus 2,500, Hey, you know, I'd love to pick Scotty Scheffler because he's at the top of the, all the ball striking stats, but just not enough juice in it for me for him. Uh, Colin Morikawa, plus 3,500, really calculated player. Uh, he's finding his form. Two weeks ago, that was his last event. He's taken the last two weeks off, but he played in the Rocket Mortgage Classic, lost in that playoff too. Ricky Fowler, uh, found his putting stroke, which is important. His last five tournament rounds, 63, 66, 67, 67, and 64. Uh, finally, Tony Finau. I know you love Tony Finau there, Coach. Uh, I think he, he's he got a lot of distance off the tee, but he can play very calculated. He lays up and plays very smart when he needs to. Again, this is this type of golf course that you have to pick apart with the old noggin. So second in uh, strokes gained also on Lynx courses since 2014. He's picked up over two shots on the field uh, over those rounds, only behind Jordan Spieth. He's the best other than Jordan Spieth, and he's the only player other than Jordan Spieth to have more than two shots gained per round on the field. So, Tony Finau, this could be his time. I sit back, and I'm on this show, and I can't believe how smart my guys are. But, Steve, if you don't mind, using words like cerebral when EC's trying to learn in the chat <laughs> – is way up here for him. He's still so working on his putting. He's still working on his putting. Back from he just, Augusta. He just saw. He just shot a solid ninety-five. He said last week. Solid. All right. All right. We can work. We can work on it. Oh man, Steve. He needs your help. He needs your help. <laughs> Patrick McDonald, you are up, sir. I'll, I'll kick it off with Victor Hovland, twenty-five to one. This is the championship where he got his feet wet on the major, major stage. Was a uh, in that final pairing with Rory McIlroy at St. Andrews. Over the last four major championships, he is number one in terms of score relative to par at 27 under, tied with Scotty Scheffler. It just feels like we're watching this, this guy learn in real time how to win a major championship. Contended there at the PGA Championship, had that big win at Jack's Place. It feels like time. His short game rises up to the occasion. He's gained in 10 of his last 12 major championship rounds around the green. You can get away with the putter around some of these uh, greens as well. And then Dustin Johnson, 35 to one. He arrives with three straight top 10 finishes. One of those being the U S open where if not, honestly, for the par four second, 
where he made a quadruple and a couple other bogeys. He would have been right there towards the end. Uh, two straight top 10 finishes at the Open Championship as well. His best was at the Royal St. George's when he lost to Darren Clark about a decade ago. That was another wet, uh, wet, rainy, windy conditions, which we will get this week. So DJ, two-time major champ, might make it three this week at 35 to one.